unique um, mold that you, that you had. Mm -hmm. And t tell me a little bit about that again. <laughs> Talk with me. Okay. All right. So there are two fermentations that wine goes through. There's the primary fermentation, which all wine goes through, mm -hmm. uh, which is where the fruit juice gets turned into wine by yeast. And the yeast, you know, when it goes through and it eats all the sugars in the, in the, in the, in the juice and converts about half the sugar to alcohol, uh -huh. uh, uh, the rest of the sugar to carbon dioxide, and then it generates heat metabolic heat at the same time uh -huh. and so that's the big sort of active roiling fermentation that people think of when they think about grape fermentation but then there's a second more gentle long fermentation that happens in the barrel room called the malolactic fermentation mm -hmm. and that converts the uh, the malic acid which is a hard uh, it's, the, it's the acid in green apples Hmm. So it's real tart, and very mm -hmm. bright, mm -hmm. to lactic acid, which is the acid in milk and cheese, which has a much rounder uh, character to it. Uh -huh. And uh, you can you can buy uh, strains of this bacteria commercially, but in 1974, Dad had his first what's called a spontaneous malolactic fermentation. And and, and that. Um, it was just something flying around in the air that liked the way the winery smelled and came in and lived here. And uh, it's uh, so it's not something that was on the the skin of the fruit or anything like that. It no, was... no, but it lives specifically in contact with wine. I mean, if you if you like take apart the name Luca Nostoc Enus, uh -huh. Enus is spelled O E N is it A S or E S O S. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh wait a minute, look right here. <laughs> OS, <laughs> you know, which is Greek for wine, and then Cladosporium cellari means sticks to the walls of a cellar. Oh, is that right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and so these are organisms that, that live, you know, specifically in in sort of conjunction with wine. Uh huh. And uh, so, you know, they they colonized here, but it's been a beneficial colony. And so this is kind of part of. You know, when I was talking about the ecology of the field and the cellar, uh -huh. this is something that we take really seriously is, is, is you know, what's, what's growing on our walls here. And so, like, the bacteria is, like, this, the, the darker things that, that uh -huh. we see? Yeah, in fact, if you look up at the ceiling there, uh -huh. uh, I, let's see, right over that barrel there, you see the splat mark on the ceiling? Uh -huh. That's the wine splatter from uh, when I was about 16. I was over there washing a barrel, and I had stuck one of the bungs too tight in the barrel. And uh, we were fermenting Chardonnay in here. And the Chardonnay, um, you know, the gas pressure built up inside there from the uh -huh. CO2. And I was looking at kaboosh! This huge fountain of wine goes shooting straight up to the ceiling. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Arnold Luca and Ostock friends were like, oh, free treats. And so they, they moved in and colonized that. I have a friend who's a painter, and I keep trying to get him up here to, to paint on the walls with wine, and then in 20 years, you know, the, the, uh, ah. the colonies will make his design come out. You know, that's kind of interesting. I've been thinking about printing uh -huh. with wine. Instead of using uh, pigments that I use, yeah. is actually try to somehow use wine as a pigment, because, like, you know, it's actually a very good pigment. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Huh. So, hmm. Printing pictures? Yeah, uh -huh. photographs. Really? Yeah, uh -huh. from wine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, haven't, uh, I haven't done it yet, but uh, I thought it would be an interesting process. I'm sure. You know, uh, print pictures and photographs. Uh. So, so um, you know, in the 1980s, our buddy Barney Watson from Oregon State University came up here. Uh -huh. uh, and the cellar has some special characteristics in that it's quite cold in the winter. And uh, uh, also our wines tend to be higher in acidity. Huh. AKA lower in pH uh -huh. than um, most of the uh, strains, uh, the malolactic strains on the market were able to, to uh, successfully ferment. And that has to do with the soil or? Um, no, it just has to do with how we grow grapes. Uh -huh. you know, um, that's a whole other conversation. You know. Tell you what, every winemaker you meet while you're writing this book, ask them what ripeness is. Ask them to define ripeness. Okay. <laughs> no two winemakers will answer it the same way. Uh huh. So, for us, an important component. You know, most winemakers just focus single-mindedly on sugar and don't think about anything else. Hmm. Um, you know, or 
they'll say I pick on flavor. Um, while flavor is an important component to how we choose our picking date, um, and sugar is another factor, uh -huh. the real thing that we're uh, trying to preserve is the acidity. And so we, we pick um, based on the acidity rather than um, on the sugar. And how are you measuring that? That's, that's a very simple measurement. None of the laboratory work that we do here goes much past sort of 19th century technology. Uh -huh. I can show you our lab. I mean, okay. you know, and these are these are the tests that are commonly used throughout, you know, wine growing still. It's uh, total acidity uh, measured by the percentage of tartaric acid, uh -huh. the pH, uh -huh. which is, you know, measured at the pH meter. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then the amount of sugar, which here in the U.S. is measured in bricks, but in other places is uxley or pomme or, um, uh, you know, other measures of, of liquid density. Uh -huh. So um, those three tests are the, the crucial tests in winemaking. Yeah. And so, and so the acidity is like, that, that's the important one for you then. Because, uh, you know, we want our wines to age for a long time, uh -huh. not just three years or five years, but 30 or 50. Yeah. <laughs> so in order to have that, if you base the structure of a wine on the tannins of the wine, tannin is a really unstable molecule. Uh -huh. It runs around and binds with everything and falls to the bottom and makes sediment. And, you know, it just, um, huh. uh, you know, it's extremely active and it'll grab oxygen molecules as they come into the bottom and tie them up and drop to the bottom uh -huh. or wrestle them to the ground. But, uh, <laughs> Acidity has many of the same preservative characteristics, but it's incredibly stable. Huh. And acidity also has the other advantage when, you know, because we make wine to go with food, it cleanses your palate between each bite. So the wine refreshes you rather than sort of, let's say you're eating a steak and, uh, you know, that's, that, that, that steak starts to sort of coat your mouth with steaky flavor. Uh -huh. uh, if you're drinking a big, flabby, kind of, you know, uh, uh, over-the-top uh, red wine without enough acidity, that red wine is going to kind of coat your mouth, too. And they're not going to play counterpoint with each other. But if you have a, a you know, a, a lovely, complex Pinot Noir with bright acidity, uh, it's going to make that, the flavors of that steak just really pop. And the steak, in turn, is going to uh, play with the, the, the different labor, layers of flavor in the wine. Uh -huh. So that interaction between acidity and food is also really important to us. That, that's sort of the, the capacity of wine to refresh the palate between each one. I'm just tasting acidity right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Can I see your lab? Yeah. Oh, I guess there's more here. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Luca Nostakinis OSU strain. This is uh, the company Laldan which is a, a French-based uh, fermentation supply company, and they sell all over the world. And so this is the strain that's licensed. Uh, wow. and, and this is one half, about one half uh, of, a, uh, of this is the Irie strain that was re refined here, and then the other half is from Erath. Huh. And so uh, the two of us uh, live in the same envelope together, I guess, when, uh, when we get shipped around the world. And so what's the difference between like the bacteria here, uh -huh. the Irie strain, uh -huh. and the Erath strain? I think the Erath strain is the Erath strain is better at lower temperatures. Uh -huh. That's its its strength is low temperature and our strength is, is uh is uh lower pH. And so you put the two together and you get you get in combination a uh a cohort of uh of critters that uh uh do their job better than any of the other commercial strains around the market when this came out. And so, like the Erath, um, you said that this was a fairly cold cellar here. So the Erath, I'm assuming that the Erath cellar then is even colder? Um, we've got 12 inches of cork insulation in the walls and ceiling here. Uh -huh. And uh, back in the you know early 80s when this was happening, I think uh, Erath cellar probably got colder in the winters, winters than ours does. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know, you have to might be interesting to talk to Barney Watson about this and see what he has to say. See, who, now, Barney Watson, who's that? Uh, he, he has, uh, he's kind of the educational mentor for the, the whole uh, Oregon industry here. He's, uh, he used to do all the heavy lifting for, for the winemaking program at Oregon State University. 
Uh -huh. But because he wasn't actually a professor, uh, you know, a PhD, they. I don't think they respected him as much as they should have. So he would never say that, but he wound up going to the uh, Chemeketa Community College um, wine and grape education program because it would just offered so many more opportunities for the students that he was working with. actually look quite a bit alike. So. Oh, poor guy. Well, he's, 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 he's another guy with, you know, just a tremendous mustache. Oh, is that right? Oh, he does great mustache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great in the Arab world. Is it? Oh, yeah, very oh. much so. See, I, I don't have the discipline to let mine get that long. Oh, this is, this is actually, it's fairly trimmed back. Really? Right now. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's like my wife doesn't like kissing me when it gets too long. Yeah, no, my kids like, mm, yeah, no. <laughs> don't let me kiss them. <laughs> <laughs> so, some of these barrels here, S15, uh, S36 for sure, S37, are, were purchased in 1970. 